Hey everyone, welcome back to the Barbell Medicine YouTube channel where we bring modern medicine to strength and conditioning and strength and conditioning to modern medicine. I'm your host, Dr. Jordan Feigenbaum, and this is a two minute Tuesday. We haven't done one of these in a while. We have a very special article series and we just released the first part of it. This is by Dr. Derek Miles and he's got input from Dr. Austin Baraki, Dr. Michael Ray, and a handful of other professionals. This stuff is really good. We're gonna talk about resistance training for endurance athletes. And part one is all about injury risk reduction using resistance training. So this is a very cool topic. So hopefully I can incentivize you to read the long form article. I've put the link in the description below and I can give you some take home pearls that'll be useful to you. Let's take a few minutes and talk about reducing injury risk using resistance training in endurance athletes. So to begin, the prevalence of injuries in endurance athletes is pretty high between 20 and about 80%. When we look at why injury rates are so high in this group, we should turn to the literature again, and a recent systematic review demonstrated little correlation between biomechanical risk factors and injury. Now, the most common subgroup of endurance athletes to become injured are novices, with about 17.8 uh, injuries per thousand participation hours compared to more seasoned runners, which have about 7.7 .7 injuries per thousand participation hours. The biggest risk factor for why novices tend to have more injuries than seasoned runners is due to training history. That is, they don't really have this base of training um, that they've built up over time that they get to add stress to. The biggest predictor actually of injury risk in this population is the history of having an injury, which is unfortunate because that's a non-modifiable risk factor. If you've had an injury before, you can't really go back and eliminate that. That being said, another big predictor of injury risk in this population would be lack of appropriate prior training and a rapid increase in workload. And we see the same thing in resistance training. Now that we've talked about the prevalence and the risk factors for developing an injury, let's talk about some specific ones and see if there's anything we can do in order to prevent these. So first, let's talk about patellofemoral pain syndrome, also known as runner's knee. It's one of the most common kinds of knee pain, uh, usually characterized by pain around the kneecap or under the kneecap, not lateralized to one side or another. Another common injury would be tendinopathies. This refers to a continuum of tendon changes that are all related to collagen, uh, including disruption, inflammation, and cellular responses. Next type of injury would be hamstring strains, and this is usually due to high velocity running or occurs in the context of sprinting, things like that. The next injury after that that's very common in this endurance population would be bone stress injuries uh, like shin splints or medial tibial stress syndrome and stress fractures. Uh, these tend to happen on a continuum in response to the bone's inability to handle repetitive mechanical loading, which ultimately leads to structural fatigue. And overall, the data suggests that 50 to 75% of running related injuries are related to overuse, i.e. Uh, an increase in training stress that occurs too rapidly. And the majority of these occur in the lower extremity around the knee, which again, if you think about what we just talked about, patellofemoral pain syndrome, tendinopathies, hamstring strains, bone stress injuries, particularly of the lower extremity, these are all again around the knee. Um, as far as treatments, at present, we have evidence on stretching, eccentric exercise, and heavy, slow resistance training, which is effectively weightlifting. Uh, and we can talk about each one of those with respect to reducing injury risk in runners specifically. So let's talk about stretching first. And I know what you're thinking, barbell medicine talking about stretching, uh, it's not what you think. Right now, the most current uh, Cochrane review on interventions for preventing running related injuries, this is from 2011, suggests that stretching, in fact, does not reduce the risk of injuries. Another systematic review of this topic from Lorison in 2014 uh, suggested that stretching is not an effective way of reducing injury risk in runners, and also that if they were to resistance train instead, that reduced all injuries by a third and overuse injuries by a half. So potentially big uh, improvement in injury risk reduction with resistance training. Um, that being said, resistance training is fairly uncommon amongst endurance athletes. We look at the data from the National High School uh, Stress Fracture Registry, it suggests that 58% of these high school athletes didn't engage in any form of resistance training at all. Um, and that's in the athletic population. In the general population, we see the 2018 Physical Activity Guidelines for Adults actually recommend resistance training for all adult Americans uh, at least twice per week. However, based on 2017 data from the National Health Interview Survey, only 23.5% of all Americans are actually meeting this minimum guidelines. Those who do, however, uh, have a 23% reduction in all-cause mortality. So obviously, there's a huge benefit uh, for engaging in resistance training in both athletic and the general population. However, it's likely being underutilized and even underdosed in both populations. 
now that we've discussed some of these common injuries in runners, let's see how resistance training can actually reduce injury risk in this population. So for patellofemoral pain syndrome, remember that was the pain that is around the knee and under the kneecap. The most recent Cochrane review for treatment of patellofemoral pain syndrome showed that exercise therapy had consistent results for improving functional ability and reducing pain. Uh, for hamstring sprains, again, remember this occurs in the context usually of high velocity running or sprinting. It's typically thought to be due to lack of hamstring eccentric strength. And so one way to develop that is by using the Nordic hamstring curl. Now you guys may have noticed that I actually have made a Nordic hamstring video how to. That's because our rehab professionals and our coaches wanted a resource that they could use for their clients instead of referring people all over the internet. I put a link to that video in the description below so you guys can check that out. We actually have a lot of data on the Nordic hamstring curl as far as prevention of injury, and we can calculate what's called a number needed to treat. Now a number needed to treat effectively stands for how many people do you need to give the intervention to prevent the outcome that you're studying. And so the number needed to treat for the Nordic hamstring curl is three, meaning that you need to treat three people to do the Nordic hamstring protocol to prevent one hamstring strain. And this is really good from a lifestyle intervention number needed to treat standpoint. So if you consider uh, the Mediterranean diet at preventing uh, cardiovascular disease, the number needed to treat for that intervention is 61. And we're comparing that to three for the Nordic hamstring curl. So again, a lot of data, a lot of good potential benefits from improving the eccentric strength of the hamstrings with respect to decreasing hamstring sprain incidence. So the next injury we'll talk about would be bone stress injuries. This would be the stress fractures and the shin splints and similar injuries that we talked about earlier. So the data suggests that endurance athletes tend to have lower bone mineral densities as measured by DEXA scan compared to their peers who play other sports. And resistance training has been shown to increase bone mineral density. And this is one of the most potent interventions we can give people to actually build up their bone mineral density while they're younger so that uh, fractures and other issues stemming from low bone mineral density in old age don't crop up. Um, the last thing we'll talk about from an injury perspective would be low back pain. Searle et al. analyzed uh, interventions for treatment of low back pain and found support for recommending strengthening exercises for the treatment of low back pain. However, this doesn't mean that having a stronger low back or bigger back muscles actually prevents low back pain. Rather, the actual engagement in resistance training is a good treatment uh, for people who have low back pain to not only get them back to function, but also decrease uh, their low back pain. So now that we've talked about the prevalence of injury rates in endurance training, uh, a few common ones and how resistance training can help, what about the risk of resistance training overall? Like, isn't it dangerous just to lift weights? So one of the best studies on this is from 2016, a systematic review by Keo et al. found that for most weight training sports, the average injury rate was about one to two injuries per athlete per year or two to four injuries per thousand participation hours. And this included things like bodybuilding, powerlifting, weightlifting, strongman, highland games, and even CrossFit, uh, although it is true that strongman and Highland games tend to have higher injury rates, somewhere in that five to six injuries per thousand participation hours. And when you compare that to the injury rates from recreational walking and like cycling to work, which can reach as high as 1.5 injuries per thousand participation hours, maybe we should be more concerned about the risk of injury from not resistance training than the actual risk of injury from resistance training. I think that resistance training offers a very potent intervention that is underutilized and again, underdosed likely in both the general and athletic populations. So hopefully I've convinced you to go read the long form article over on the barbellmedicine.com website. I've put the link uh, in the description below. And if you like the video, make sure you hit subscribe for all the latest content. Uh, leave us a comment below, share it with your friends. We'll see you guys next time. Later.